Um, so the motto of public invention is to invent in the public for the public. And by in the public, we mean in a very open way. And we, we use the term open as it means in the open source software movement, but also in general, we expose everything that we do. And that includes showing our failures and our mediocrities as well as our successes. Um, and we invent for the public. That is, um, we are not inventing to make money. Uh, we're trying to make the world a better place. And so we're inventing publicly for all the people on the planet as best we can achieve that. So we have certain values um, that we try to um, work towards that were worked out by um, me and the board. Um, we share everything equally and immediately. Uh, work in the light. And that means as much as possible, show your work. So we do everything in open GitHub repos and, and we invite people to observe what we're doing. Uh, a motto that's a little hard to understand is keep it real. Um, I don't think public invention should build toys. Okay, it's not that I'm opposed to fun. It's just that there's so many real interesting projects in the world to be done that I would like to co-op some of the energy of the maker movement that spends a lot of time doing hobby work sort of for fun and channel some of that energy into things that could really help people on the planet. We don't build weapons. And one of our thoughts is that ideas are cheap. Uh, I say ideas are cheap because we've got a spreadsheet of 55 ideas. Some of them are just in the inception page. What's really hard is getting the energy to take an idea from inception to a prototype to something that's proved out. And that's the primary job that public invention does. However, we do publish ideas themselves if people are willing to donate them to the world by placing them under a free libre open source license. We seek egalitarian usefulness because not every invention helps everybody. Uh, by the nature of any technical work or any invention that you do, some people are gonna be helped more than others. But when we can, we favor those inventions which make the world more egalitarian than those inventions that make the world less egalitarian. And we collaborate whenever possible. And um, those of you who are parents listening to me will understand this. You know, sometimes when your toddler is making chocolate chip cookies, you could just push them out of the way and get the cookies made faster. But if you do that, your toddler will never learn to make the cookies. And so uh, at Public Invention, we do collaboration even when it seems like it's not worth our time to do the collaboration, that it seems to be um, slowing us down. And then finally, we honor and value every contribution. Um, by definition, we're a somewhat technical um, organization. We also have legal uh, innovations that we're working on. But we need artists and writers and photographers and videographers and graphic artists and other people to assist us. So um, we, in a way, we're bound to be a little bit elitist because inventing things is, is not simple. Uh, but we, we value the people who assist public invention who are not really uh, technically doing the math to do the invention. So in the last, 50 years or 70 years, I guess, since World War II, you can say there were two huge forces for innovation in the United States and the Western world. And they were for-profit firms and universities, okay? Those two forces have greatly increased the wealth in the world. Now, public invention always existed. Uh, Benjamin Franklin refused to patent the Franklin stove uh, back in the 1760s because he believed it was too useful an invention to monopolize. Jonas Salk did not patent the polio vaccine. Buckminster Fuller expressed a philosophy of inventing for the purpose of making human progress. This has always been with us. But what a public invention, the organization, not the movement, 
would like to do, public invention, the charity, would like to create a movement to make public invention rise to be a third pole, uh, uh, somewhat equivalent to universities and for-profit firms, okay? And um, in many ways, public invention is an extension of the free libre open source software movement extended to hardware um, uh, devices. And it's also the case that we're sort of part of the maker movement uh, in the sense that in the last 20 or 30 years, it's become much cheaper to use computers, make microelectronics, 3D printing has kind of changed the possibilities of what you can do. All of that um, allows us to have a future in which a person can say, well, I'm gonna work for 10 years trying to make money at a for-profit firm. And then I'm gonna work for a while at a university. And then I'm gonna be a public inventor. And then I'm gonna go back and just move between those things. Okay, so public invention is the name of our organization, but we're trying to do something larger. We're trying to create a movement for public invention, which eventually will change the way the world uh, deals with these things. So we have some practices. I'm gonna go over these very quickly. I may be taking up a little too much time. We do in-browser development whenever possible, because that is the easiest possible deployment uh, for people to share what we're doing. We look for spinoffs uh, in the work that we've done. And we've created some examples. Uh, Triad Balance is an example of a spinoff I did. Segmented helices is a very important example. I'll show it later, although that work was not done this year. And we try to use modern agile, modern technology and modern publishing techniques. Now the Rice team is gonna show you some excellent videos, which are way better than <laughs> public invention. Uh, creates. You know, uh, I'm 55 years old, so I don't necessarily always make the best uh, videos, but we try. So we have a YouTube channel and we try to make really good videos and try to use um, the best possible techniques. Um, another thing that we do is we work at the thin boundary between science and engineering. Uh, so we're trying to work in the area that's true invention that can be done on a modest economic scale where you don't have to have a $100,000 laboratory to do it. And engineering where we're trying to innovate something which is being engineered for the good of humanity. So we have a spreadsheet here of 56 different projects um, uh, that we would like to get volunteers for and invention coaches for eventually. 